British inventor and mining engineer Richard Trevitic was born on 13th April 1771 in Cornwall, England to Richard Trevitic Sr. and Antique and was the youngest of six children. As a child, Richard was sent to school at Camborne but was not much of a school enthusiast which made him concentrate more on sports than schoolwork as he was more of an athlete. He was once described by one of the schoolmasters as a disobedient, slow, obstinate, spoiled boy, frequently absent and very inattentive. Although when it came to arithmetic, he showed great knowledge and interest. He spent a part of his childhood watching steam engines as they pumped water from deep tins and copper mines in Cornwall. At some point later in his life, Richard was a neighbor to William Murdock, the man who pioneered the steam carriage. After the little education he had, Richard went to work at the East Stray Park Mine at the age of 19. He showed interest in the work and was quickly promoted to a consultant, which was a position that was not usually given to someone that age. This earned him some popularity among the miners, also due to the respect they had for his father, who himself was the head of miners. Richard, now grown, married Jane Harvey of Hale in 1797. Together, they had six children through the course of their marriage. John Harvey, the father of Jane, was once a blacksmith that founded a local foundry, Harvey's of Hale, and operated with steam engines invented by Thomas Newcomen in 1712, which were more condensing in type. James Watt, who worked at Harvey's, entered into a partnership with Bolton Matthew and pretended the ways of improving how to make Thomas Newcomen's engine more efficient. Richard, now employed as an engineer at the Dindong Mine in 1797, sought for ways to make the steam of higher capacity than the low steam that was used, but was served an injunction by Bolton and Watt. Richard, however, kept on with his idea all the while gaining knowledge from the experience at the mine. He then realized that instead of using pressure that was near to the surface, it was safer with the improvements in boiler technology to produce high steam that could move a piston in a steam engine by itself. Though Richard was not the first to postulate the idea of a strong steam engine, as William Murdoch has developed and demonstrated one model steam carriage in 1784, and again to Trevitic 10 years later in 1794. Still, Richard, according to his son Francis Trevitic, was the first to make an engine with high pressure steam that worked in England in 1799. The effectiveness of high-pressure steam was that it eliminated the condenser and also allowed for the use of smaller cylinders and could save space, especially when attached to a carriage. Richard built his first model of the high-pressure steam locomotive in 1801 and called it Puffin Devil. He put his carriage to test on Christmas Eve that year by carrying six people in it from four streets through two more streets and ended at the village of Beacon. It was recognized as the first test of transportation powered by steam. But the locomotive broke down three days after its publicized test when it passed over a gully. The engine overheated when the water boiled off, causing the machine to burn up. Richard did not see this as a setback but considered it an operator error. He went on to get a patent for his high pressure steam in 1802. After that, Richard built another vehicle that was powered by steam for the road the next year and called this one London Steam Carriage. When he drove it from Holborn to Peddington, it attracted more attention from the press and the public than the previous one, but the passengers found it uncomfortable and more expensive. This led to it being abandoned and the rights to the locomotive were sold to Samuel Humphrey. That same year, in 1803, one of the pumping engines for stationary exploded in Greenwich, killing four men. Again, Richard blamed it on the carelessness of operation rather than a design error. But to Bolton and Watts, it was an avenue to condemn the work of Richard as a risk. In response to the criticism, Richard built two safety valves into designs he made in the future. Humphrey, who had purchased the rights to Richard's locomotive, set a bet with Richard Crochet in 1804 for 500 guineas to have the steam locomotive haul 10 tons of iron through 9.7 miles. Humphrey won the bet despite doubts cast by viewers. In 1808, Richard publicized his first steam railway locomotive that he called Catch Me Who Can, which was intended to show that rail travel was faster than traveling by horse. 
The intention was marred by the weak tracks that waned the public interest. This disappointed Richard, who then seized the design of railway locomotives. Richard was not discouraged, however, from researching other projects to exploit the high-pressure steam engines. That same year, he entered a partnership with Robert Dixon, who supported several of Richard's patents. Their business, however, went high and low, that by 1811, they were both declared bankrupt, until Richard was able to pay off most of their partnership debts in 1814. Richard again designed a new high-pressure condensing steam engine in 1812, known as the Cornish engine. It became the most efficient engine in the world at the time. He also installed a high-pressure engine at a threshing machine that was cheaper and was used for 70 years before it was retired as an exhibit at the Science Museum. He continued with his invention in 1829 with a closed-cycle steam engine and a vertical tubular boiler. The next year, he invented what was the early form of a storage heater and was also invited by John Hall to develop an engine of a new vessel at Datford which earned him £1,200. After a year of working at Datford, Richard took ill with pneumonia at a Bull Hotel where he was lodged, alone and far away from his family whom he had been accursed of abandoning for the cost of his work. Richard died on 22nd April 1833 with no relatives and friends at his bedside. He also had no money at the time of his death. He was buried by his friends in an unmarked grave at the St. Edmund's burial ground, East Hill, Dartford. Outside the public library of Camborne stands a statue of Richard in his honor. A plaque of Richard was also unveiled on March 17, 2007 by the chairman of the Trevitic Society at the Royal Victoria and Bull Hotel where he died. Thank you very much for watching our videos. We'll appreciate it if you subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends. We love you.